Have you ever tried training for hours on end, improving aim, only to feel like it didn't even translate into your next match? Or try to learn a cool lineup and utility combinations, only to never really use them? What's going on, ProGuides fam? I'm Kangas, and welcome to the fourth episode of Improvement Saturdays, where each week we break down a key concept of tactical FPS games so that we can better understand Valorant at a higher level. Today's concept isn't necessarily a key aspect of the game itself, but more of a core fundamental of you as a player in each game. We're talking, of course, about consistency. In this video, I'll try to break down what consistency is and explore more ways to build consistency in the game so that you can better make use of your practice and also understand what to practice as well. And as always, having a mentor or somebody to watch and analyze your gameplay is a much more efficient way to learn about your weaknesses and strengths. So if you're looking to find the most consistent way to improve at every level, go check out ProGuides.com where our immortal and radiant level coaches are more than willing to dissect your gameplay and figure out the best way for you to reach that next level. We also got pro courses from players like Sentinel-10s and Team Liquid Scream that cover topics like mastering the fundamentals and specializing in roles like the Duelist. They cover way more than I can in a single YouTube video, so if any of that sounds interesting to you, make sure to come check us out. All right, so let's define consistency. Perhaps the first thing we need to get out of the way before we can explore how to gain it in your gameplay is to understand consistency as a concept. Now, this one is relatively simple, and the practice of this concept is usually the head-scratcher, so we'll keep this one quick. Consistency is the quality of being able to perform at a certain level over the long term. What we mean here is that to be consistent is to be able to achieve similar results over a course of multiple games of Valorant. And that's basically it. Consistency as a concept isn't very hard to understand, but it's kind of like running. We all know what running is, but if someone were to ask you how to run, only sports scientists could really give you a full breakdown of the exact motion. On the same note, consistency itself is not foreign to anyone, but the factors that create consistency are often harder to pinpoint. Another thing that you need to understand before going into how to build consistency is also understanding the importance of it. Now, before you guys start saying, but Genghis, I know why it's important. It helps me win games and become a better player. Hear me out here. Consistency is important to help win games and become a better player, yes, but that's not the actual goal. Consistency has a much broader set of rules that also affect how we approach unknown situations as well as build strong habits to shape our gameplay as a whole. One common misconception of consistency is the idea that a consistent player is supposed to just hit more shots and win more duels. And while that is kinda true, having insane aim can do the same thing. Consistency has a much bigger influence on the game in that you're putting yourself in positions where you're at an advantage regardless of aim. Or on the flip side, creating ways where you can take advantage of your good aim. The important thing to note here is that consistency is actually less reliant on the outcome of a specific action, but the intention that creates the action. So the importance of consistency is that, much like Game Sense, it shapes the way that you view and approach the game in a way that helps you achieve your goals. So in order to achieve this as a player, the first step is to realize that no decision has a guaranteed outcome. When you take a duel with an enemy, it's never guaranteed that you will win or the enemy will win. There's always a chance either way. But notice that depending on the situation, the chance that the fight goes in your way can also differ greatly as well. For example, if the enemy has 1 HP and is turned around, chance that you kill them is almost 100%, unless you make the whiff of a century. On the other hand, if you're low HP and the enemy knows where you are, the chance of you winning that duel is much lower, or at least not anywhere close in your favor. This is an important thing to note because not all fighters are born equal. On that same note, not all decisions are equal either. Some decisions give you a high chance of winning the round, while others can actually cause you to lose. So in order to achieve consistency, that means you have to recognize what decisions win you the round and which decisions won't help as much. The goal at the end of the day for every player is to play percentages. If you have an 80% chance of winning a duel, then on average, you win eight out of 10 duels. Of course, you can get unlucky and lose two or three duels in a row, but in the long term, you'll see more success. Meanwhile, if you only have a 50% chance of a duel, then every duel is gonna be a coin flip. You win four or five duels in a row, but that will even out over the long term. One big rule of achieving consistency is playing the percentage game, and that will also tie into our next point as well. As a player, it's really easy to get caught up on outcomes. If you lose, you might come down on yourself. If you win, you might feel confident and excited. Now, I'm not advocating for you to turn into a robot, but this next part is for those of you who get caught up too much in your emotions. Don't let the outcomes define your playstyle. One big trap for creating bad habits in newer players is that outcomes will justify the play. Just because it worked doesn't mean it was a great play, or even a good one for that matter. On the same note, just because it didn't work doesn't mean it was a bad play either. 
If you worry too much about the outcome, then you won't think about the theory behind a good play, and you might even hesitate, causing you need to lose when you shouldn't. So, drop the outcome. And yeah, it seems counterintuitive that to win more, you have to not care about winning, but that is the reality of it. To become a better player, you have to be able to rely on making high percentage plays, and that means being confident and not letting outcomes, which is something you can't always control, dictate the way that you play. So that leads us directly to the next point, which is to control the controllable. If you want to have as much impact on a game as possible, you have to put all of your mental energy into controlling the things that you can actually control. And in short, that basically just means to control yourself. One of the best things I ever learned that helped me improve much faster was this exact point. For the longest time, I would worry so much about how my teammates played or how badly the enemy played that I'd get in my own head and it would affect my own playstyle. Instead of getting tilted to bad teammates or scoffing at how the enemy got lucky or did something stupid, why not spend that energy focusing on what my next play will be? Too many times we spend unnecessary energy on factors that are out of our control, and then we end up getting lost in the sauce. As the saying goes, you can't control the outcome, but you can control your attitude towards it. Letting emotions dictate your play is the easiest way to throw consistency out the window. You need to focus less on the uncontrollable and more on yourself because you can only control your own decisions. And that leads us to our question of the day. What aspect in Valorant do you have the most trouble improving in? We asked this because we want to know what topic we should cover in our next video to help you grow as a player. When I first started playing the game, I wasted comms a lot on having fun and making friends rather than actually talking about the game. So once I got better at actually communicating what was happening and being more focused, then I saw my improvement increase a lot. I know that's a strange example, but I'm curious what yours are, so let me know in the comments below. So now that we have the mindset necessary to achieve consistent gameplay, it's time to consider how to improve consistency in different aspects of your play. Whether it's to have better decision making or to have more consistent aim, consistency manifests itself in lots of different ways. So let's talk first about aim and mechanics. Consistency in your mechanics is probably the most simple thing to improve on, but also the easiest to create bad habits in. In lots of cases, what hurts consistency the most is that people don't understand where their bad habits are even coming from or not even aware that they exist. So let's talk about bad habits before we talk about anything else. As we all know, practice makes perfect is kind of a misrepresentation of the wisdom that it's trying to give. Working hard is a crucial element of improving and mastery of anything, but not just any practice will do. Most people nowadays say perfect practice makes perfect, and that's exactly the case when trying to build consistency. Recently, I had a friend who asked me to help him improve, so I watched him play in a deathmatch, in the shooting range, and in a ranked game, and in every single mode, his playstyle was different. In deathmatch, he just ran around and tried to take fights half-heartedly. In the shooting range, he trained well and focused on taking his time to aim, but in the ranked game, all of that went out the window, and he tried to shoot as fast as he could whenever he saw an enemy, committing to a spray pattern every time. See what I'm trying to say here? In each mode, he played a style that was not consistent with how he would play in other modes. In deathmatch, he played fine, but he didn't try to peek properly or try to practice his first bullet accuracy. In aim training, he practiced his first bullet accuracy, but didn't try to incorporate reaction or movement into the mix. And evidently in the game, he couldn't make use of anything that he had practiced before, ending up in resorting to spraying a brain. Being consistent with your aim and mechanics means that you practice and play with the same mentality, whether it's in a deathmatch, an unrated, or a ranked game. Some tips to help with this is to enter deathmatches with a clear focus, whether it's to improve on your movement, your first bullet accuracy, or anything else. If you're just trying to warm up, then treat it as a test to see how you're feeling by taking duels seriously. The main thing here is to always try to incorporate something into your gameplay. A deathmatch is the closest thing to actually practicing duels in games, other than just playing unrated or ranked itself. If you build good habits from the start, then it's way easier to maintain them in game when the pressure is greater. And now moving on, consistency in decision making is a much harder concept to approach as there's not as many tools or ways to inherit good decision making other than to experience a game and think critically on each decision you make. This is often easier done if you play with a team or have somebody who's much more experienced that can actually analyze your decisions in game. And I know I've said it before, but having a mentor or coach is monumental when trying to improve your decision making because you just don't know what you don't know. So on this topic, it's a lot harder for me to give you surefire ways to build consistency in decision making, but instead let's talk about some ways that you can help narrow down the focus. I'm sure we all know about defaults, but not a lot of people understand its benefits for improvement. In game, it's a tool for a team to gather information while also preventing gaps that enemies can sneak through. But one thing you'll notice is that in pro teams, people default around the same areas every round. The reason is not only because of mind games, as we talked about in our past episode, but because it narrows down the goal of a player in that situation. 
Similarly to how usually you want to defend a specific site on the defender side, you also want to default one position because it allows you to focus less on the bigger picture and more on a smaller set of factors revolving around your area. If you want to improve decision making, it's better to default around one area and understand the ins and outs of rotations and plays around that part, rather than spreading yourself thin and only understanding surface level information on all areas of the map. Now again, I'll preface it by saying that this is a very general tip and mostly geared towards people learning the game still, or even learning the agent that you're playing. By narrowing your focus, you can really practice your decision making and also create routines during the game that build a consistent play style that you can rely on. This means you put yourself in more positions to get results and also find ways to incorporate cool ability lineups or other interesting plays into the mix. Not only that, but it sets you up to understand a deeper and more complex version of the game that will help you learn new positions quicker and better as well, rather than just watching pro players and wondering why they're doing what they're doing. While that's not nearly all the factors of consistency, aim and decision making drive a large majority of the practical aspect of consistency in game. Paired with a proper mindset and approach to improving as a player, anyone who puts in the work will naturally start to see their gameplay shaped into a more consistent and grounded approach. But what do y'all think? Have we helped you get a better idea of what consistency is and how to approach becoming a more consistent player? Make sure to let me know in the comments down below, and if you liked the video, make sure to leave a thumbs up and sub to keep up with all of our daily Valorant content. Once again, I'm your host, Kangas. This has been Improvement Saturdays. Best of luck on the grind, everybody, and I'll see you in the next one.